Isn't that something? What? Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, once again, uh, Jim Fleeler, and uh, it's Friday, May the 22nd. And um, just uh, hopefully on this, oh, all of a sudden, I think we, are we live? You're live. Okay, we're live. Okay, the screen went dark in front of me there, but uh, hopefully you and your families and, uh, and employees are staying safe. Uh, uh, wish uh, everybody in the United States a, a great Memorial weekend. Uh, finally, it looks like the summer's here, so that'll uh, be something that'll be uh, is uh, is well needed for us all to maybe help put a little few smiles on our face here. So, thank you for joining us once again, and for those that are attending, again, uh, our numbers continue to grow with uh, with uh, many many new registrants signed on this week. So that uh, just reinforces the fact we're doing something uh, correct. Um, the uh, you know this week and in the future there moving forward employees and the public are going to demand cleaner facilities. Um, there's uh, businesses without question really need to improve. Uh, we've got to make sure that we ensure public safety uh, on a reduced budget and expect to clean better and more frequent. And how are we going to actually do that? So imagine that uh, being expected to clean more, to clean better on probably a reduced budget. You know, and really that's uh, that's one of the topics we're talking about today is, and that's surrounding washrooms. Uh, and what we are going to tell you or show you is really simple and inexpensive ways to uh, find labor efficiency surrounding washrooms. So that's really what the topic is today. In the news, uh, obviously businesses are reopening across North America. Last week was Canada's uh, long weekend Victoria Day. And uh, this week it's Memorial Day in the US. And uh, those are both major celebrations with millions of people involved. And uh, the warmer weather's here. People are gonna be in the parks and the beaches and the stores. Uh, and it's gonna be interesting to see how the public handles that. Uh, the distancing efforts. I know when I've been out and about uh, in restricted uh, areas, uh, some people do it well, some people do not do it well at all. So we're gonna, we could have negative effects in in a couple of weeks. There, uh, there's major uh, stories. Um, you know, there about a total revamp of the uh, secondary, uh, post-secondary education sector. Uh, with a lot of uh, virtual education versus long-standing traditional methods uh, and, and loss of revenue and lowering student debt and uh, all involved with tier one, tier two and tier three uh, and even Ivy categories there. Uh, that's gonna make major, major news. Hmm? Yeah, here. Oh, no, I'm not ready yet. No, okay, sorry. Uh, and, the, and the public impact, you know, there appear, uh, really appears to be a lowering of the guard uh, amongst the public, a more relaxed outlook. Now's not the time to get complacent, uh, you know, w without question there. So so scientists, doctors, they're all talking about influenza and coronavirus uh, and it's changing in significant ways and possibly mutating into a hybrid type. And if that occurs, obviously uh, it's gonna cause major disruption and reversing our efforts most likely. So really the juries out there. Uh, on a supplier notice, uh, uh, I would certainly be not be correct if I didn't give you some sort of warning that if this second wave comes and things, uh, there will be shortages. There's shortages now for those that didn't plan well, and it's very serious. And, and as always, we suggest you bringing in uh, that extra inventory. Uh, disinfectants and sanitizers generally have a three-year shelf life, so there's a little risk of that. Uh, but you're better to have more in these days than less because we're just not quite sure what tomorrow's going to do. Uh, as always, we're here to assist you in any way possible. The hundreds and hundreds of questions are coming in, fielding them again today. We've got uh, IT in the room and we've got Matt in the room and uh, they're fielding them. I think Jen's on the line and uh, and a few others uh, answering questions for you. If we don't get to them, we'll get to them during the week there. So, uh, so thank you for your support and we appreciate your participation. And uh, with that, let's, uh, let's start our presentation today. Okay, so, so, oh, I have this one mm -hmm. right here. Okay, so Friday, May the 22nd, uh, same topic, uh, same me. Um, you know, uh, Askwith will be here uh, probably in about 20 minutes or so. And this week, uh, as I said, uh, you know, it's cleaning protocols to lower the risk of an outbreak. And, um, and the weekly series will continue, submit your questions. And this is all about washroom cleaning efficiencies. Uh, that are very simple and inexpensive 
uh, ways that we can help you. We've got a nice video here that's a real nice takeaway for you. Um, and you can revisit it as much as you want. So, and then we'll do open mic there as we go along. So, so in post coronavirus, which is apparently what we're close to, to getting to, uh, we've we've talked about this last week, but we have to prioritize cleaning as an investment. You know, uh, it's an investment in public health. There's nothing more important in the air these days. Uh, we've got to lower the risk of an outbreak, that positive contribution for the next in line generations, the critical uh, prevention of uh, disease and injuries. Um, you know, it, it, everything that we do has a, uh, a big impact on uh, on positive sustainability or negative if, if we don't do it right. You know, we want to protect facility capital assets. We talked about the longevity of any company. And last week, for those that didn't see the video, you'll see my personal example of uh, cockroaches uh, on the uh, on a hotel room. And quite honestly, I'm not going back there. So clean cells. If you're in distribution, uh, if you're in any kind of business, clean cells. If you have a clean restaurant, people will come back. If you have a clean hotel, people will come back. So, so don't ever lose sight of that and put it down the list of important items. Uh, you know, if you're, if you're beginning to reopen, I've given a couple of terms here, the, uh, and that really stands for you either do it right the first time, or you're going to do it wrong the first time. And for the last time, you know, if your areas of the facility, uh, if you're a restaurant or your hotel or you're a, a whatever, a public retail outlet of any sort, your customers are going to judge you in any area that they can either see or smell. And if they're not rate right up to expectations, you've lost that customer and the cost to get that customer back is uh, is tremendous. Uh, right from the second they enter your lobby area, reception area, the waiting area, it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, the entry signage, what have you done? Social distancing rules. I mean, there's a lot of pressure on us there to respect those, you know, the little foot markers on there, the tape that goes across using uh, grocery carts to automatically force you to do that, you know, and distancing employees, right? If you're doing all of that work and your employees aren't uh, aren't covering that off or following those guidelines, customers are going to know and they'll make a judgment and it usually isn't a good one, right? Odor management is critical. If you have uh, any kind of facility that basically has been shut down for several months, uh, air gets stagnant. The buildings have been closed. Maybe you haven't changed the air filtration and, you know, things build up in there, stagnant odors and things. So instantly odor management in those first sort of, um, uh, you know, entry uh, areas is, is critical. Okay. Uh, got the customer atmosphere. If it's dark and dingy, it's not probably going to be accepted. Well, you know, brighten areas best, clean the windows, open the drapes, polish chrome, declutter. That's one of the biggest things I heard this week about, about facilities is really decluttering old magazines and old items that have been around, make it clean and airy. And those are really, uh, you know, impactful things that you can control. Um, also dining room tables, bar stools, patio settings, you know, arranged with proper social distancing. Uh, we talked about the casinos last week. Uh, you know, this week, uh, you know, golf course are starting up. In fact, most golf cart, uh, golf courses, you can't even go into the dining room area. It's outside. It's one per cart and things, but make sure if you do have these types of areas, you practice that social distancing, clean streak free, glass windows, tableware, spotless cutlery, cutlery, they all play a vital role in the return of customers. They may come back once, but if you don't treat them right and, and show that you taking their public health serious, you've probably lost them. You know, if you're a facility that has an exposed food prep area, you've got where people can see, uh, they're just not going to walk by anymore. They're going to actually take a little peek in there. And they, if you're not, if you're not organized and clean and sanitized, employees, well-groomed, clean uniforms, they're going to make a uh, perception, which isn't really in the best interest of you. Public washrooms, foul smells from the drains, the urinals. In today's video, we're covering a lot of that for you. HVAC systems that are broken, broken fixtures, visually visually dusty ceiling vents and things that are in the air. Uh, these are all tips for you to start cleaning up. And all of your distribution partners have all of the tools of the trade to help you with these things, right? You wanna make sure that you've got an ample supply of towel, of tissue, of soap, of hand sanitizer with dispensers that are in good operating condition that people are not afraid to touch. 
uh, you know, and, and you're posting, if you are posting cleaning checklists, make sure that they're up to date and that you've got the frequencies there. They're signed off with times and things because people will actually look at those. Uh, if, if they may not have before, uh, but they absolutely will now. And I want to talk about product quality because that's one of the big things uh, that, that really can help you with your best return on investment. A custodial tool such as a simple wet mop head should never be purchased based on price alone. And I'll show you here, this is a typical cotton string mop. Uh, this here, I mean, it, it, well, there's a strand fell off right there, okay? Uh, and I don't want to get it going because it's all dusty and linty, but this thing varies from $3 to $8 and it works fine, but it has a lot of drawbacks, right? It doesn't absorb well. It, what that does is leave a residual behind. It, it's a, it also creates a possible host of biomass, encouraging the growth of bacteria and viruses, right? It leaves strings and strands behind, just like I had that one there. I guess I threw it on the floor or something. Um, but I mean, it leaves them behind. And if a customer is walking through your facility, and it doesn't matter what kind of facility, they're going to look and say, geez, what's going on? Your custodial people will spend more time picking up these things on the floor around the legs of your chairs and, and, and stools and things. Um, and it, it just sends a bad message, right? It falls apart. It's difficult to rinse out. It creates foul odors. It looks dirty after the first few times that you use it. Again, negative perception. It increases the overall labor and spend because it doesn't work that well. Uh, and, you know, and the, and the custodians really need to spend time on focusing on those more important tasks than worrying about this. It's not a sustainable directive in any way because you throw them in the landfill frequently uh, and it doesn't motivate your custodians and your janitorial people. You know, and it won't impress your customers. So, so if you're continuing, one tip for you, if you're going to buy that, okay, um, there's better ways. The reason why you're probably buying it is because you don't know of other options, right? So let's talk about uh, a quality one. I've talked about this in the past. This is our microfiber tube mop. Uh, it's more expensive. It costs more if you're just buying a mop. But if you're buying a return on investment, uh, it is the best possible thing that you could do as far as mopping floors. It'll be six to $16, depending on the brand, the size and all of those things. But the overall cost is dramatically less. It'll outlast this five to 10 times. So if you pay five dollars for this, and and you know, and th this, so and you need five of them to make up for the life of this. This is twenty five dollars, and if I say this is sixteen dollars, the most expensive price I've used. Look at the difference. I mean, you'll have a 30, 40 percent savings. You'll have five less of these in the landfill. It'll pick up better. It's more absorbent. There's fewer trips back to the bucket. You know, giving you labor efficiencies. It picks up more more liquid faster dry time, less risk of a slip and fall. Uh, you know, it's easier to rinse out. It cleans out better. It looks better longer, less risk of cross-contamination, uh, less chance of foul odors. I mean, and, and the overall facility cleanliness is increased. So, so for a matter of a few dollars here and there, why, why wouldn't you encourage it? You know, my, my, uh, my line of defense for everybody is you probably don't know about it, right? So that's really as simple. We're talking a mop head. We're not talking anything else, right? So the tools of the trade, uh, just a little a little, little sort of finishing up on it, is if there was ever a time to do a complete review of all of your custodi custodial tool quality, now's the time. Wet bu buckets, scrapers, scouring pads, sponges. You'll use one of those aftermarket, you know, whatever brand uh, uh, yellow scrub sponges with the green side that just basically falls apart the first use. You'll use a trigger sprayer like this. And unfortunately, these are some of the only ones that are available today. But I mean, I've got a choice of this one or I've got a choice of this one. And if you can see that well, this one is going to cost more, no doubt. It is going to outlast this one probably five to 10 times. You're not going to have the prone, the leaking that is prone to these things, safer for people who um, have sensitivity or using it a lot ergonomically, you can apply more. These are things that, that basically uh, you need to be aware of. And that's what today's session is about, right? The public will be floor pads. I mean, if, uh, you know, if you're stripping and, and labor is 90% of your cost and you're using a very inexpensive black stripping pad, you will aggravate yourself to no end with increasing your labor, doubling, tripling, whatever. You will not get a good end result. You're going to throw more pads in the landfill. 
all of these things uh, are related there. So that's really our conversation today. So, uh, you know, the customers are going to look at these things. If you want to motivate your, your employees, your custodians, your, your, uh, cust uh, your janitorial team, cleaning team, I mean, give them the right tools without question. Okay, so I'm going to go to a small about a 15 minute video on washroom labor efficiencies. I know every single one of you will really get a, a lot of good solid information out of this and uh, we'll be back shortly. Hello everybody, Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Charlotte Products in Canada. Welcome to today's uh, video short. Uh, this one's actually going to focus on post-coronavirus washroom cleaning checklist. So it's here to help every single one of us clean a very vital part of any facility and that is the washrooms. We want to lower the risk of an outbreak. Uh, with today's COVID-19, there's no question there's going to be a ramp up in a, a, of the need to clean better um, with probably less money, as a matter of fact, because I don't believe budgets are going to increase post-coronavirus. In fact, you probably won't have what you had spending before that. So what we have to do is learn new efficient ways, and that's what we'll talk to you about today. Uh, out of uh, every single dollar you spend on custodial or janitorial, well over 90% is attributed to labor. And what that means is uh, between about five or ten percent is the cost of supplies. Although price is important without doubt, uh, really to meet these needs and new demands from COVID-19 and, and that issue, we're going to have to really maximize our labor savings. And it doesn't matter what currency we're in, we're definitely going to have to do that. So welcome to today's video. Uh, let's walk through washrooms here showing you those efficient uh, ways that you can really lower those costs and at the same time improve your cleaning overall. So let's get started. Okay, so some of the, the most popular ways that people still clean today is they basically will take a bit of a trigger sprayer and they'll take paper towel and they'll, they'll spend a lot of time cleaning, bending, using this paper towel, which is a real old way, I guess it works, but you can see the amount of time that that takes. As an alternative to the trigger sprayer and the paper towel, we've been talking about our pump up sprayers. Just simply pump to, to pressurize. And what you can see there, now I've applied in just a very quick motion my disinfectant. Obviously I want to do a pre-clean, which I'm doing, okay? I've done that and I'm basically going to put on a fine mist and walk away much faster than a trigger sprayer, much more uh, uh, pickup than paper towels and things like that. Microfiber, our ES15, our pump up sprayer, way more efficient for you. So here's another area. Uh, we've talked about these before. These are our color-coded charge buckets, blue in, in a particular part of your facility, red, orange, yellow, uh, green, and uh, they're usually four different colors. Now what I've done, I've put my disinfectant solution in here. I've actually pre-rung this, so you've got your housekeeping card, so this is a good way as well. I can take this, okay? and I can apply my disinfectant solution. Very, very simple. I allow my dry time and then I can basically wipe from here. And that's an actual efficient way, much better way than a trigger sprayer and a paper towel for sure. So that's another option. Okay, so back again here. Uh, so we've talked about the trigger sprayer. We've talked about the pump up sprayer. Let's talk about a scrub sleeve. Now this is usually out of a window kit. So I would saturate this sleeve in my, in my cleaner and disinfectant of choice. And what you could see is I can just basically go up and I can go down. I can do all of these surfaces extremely fast and have that done. My dwell time can stay intact, the whole works. When it comes to actually drying it, it's basically a squeegee up and down, okay? Not gonna get too fancy here, but what you could see is I could do this relatively easy and I'm done. A little extension wand as well. If you're a little shorter, ceilings are a little taller. What you can see is you can get these anywhere, good distributor. I can take and attach my squeegees, my scrub sleeve. So what you can see is I can get to the top easily without stretching whatsoever. As a matter of fact, I can go pretty well right to a ceiling without question. Very efficient tools, better than trigger sprayer, better than pump up sprayer. But I'm gonna show you another way now, and that's actually a flat mop, so let's show you that. Another tool is for efficiency is, this is called an actual hand trowel. 
This takes a typical flat mop, uh, a microfiber flat mop, and you can see without, with, I, I want to really be fast and I want to be thorough. So what you can see is the speed I can go through. I can go through these surfaces extremely fast without coming in contact with anything. I can do my clean and disinfect and I can actually do a dry because I have drying cloths for these as well and I'm done. Much more efficient way. Okay, we just talked about this as it doing the partitions and, and, and things like that, but let's talk about wall washing because there's a lot of areas where dust bunnies go there. There's a lot of spew, maybe uh, some splashing and spilling and things like that. So, but how do we actually clean these walls? Well, generally it's a ladder. And what we do know from a health and safety standpoint, we want to keep people's feet on the ground because there's less risk of a slip and fall. So again, just various brands and things. This one's just one that I had handy. Adjustable, but I have an eight foot ceiling and you can see there easily that I'm going right to the top you know, without even stretching or even barely lowering, raising my shoulders. So I always want to start and do the top, okay? I'm going to do my edge and then I'm simply, I can go in a back and forth. I can go like floor finish and I can go side to side, swirling that way. But you can see I'm not bending. My back's not bending at all. I'm not putting any stress on me. The other thing too, when it comes to these famous things, Especially when COVID-19 is in the air, we do not want to have our workers around any of these splash areas. These are bodily fluids, no matter what way you look at it. So I want to keep a distance. So again, a flat tool, starting at the top. I can simply go across in any fashion that I want, okay? But when it comes to getting down around here, look at how easily and thoroughly that does that job. I can go right in these specific areas, splash areas, the coves, whatever. I've got that area without touching it, staying away from any contaminants, a safer, faster way to clean. Okay, one of the items on our checklist as well is high dusting. These are things that are typically not done because they're high in the air and there's a risk. It takes time to get ladders and, and things like that. So this is just a, a, a lamb's wool duster. A, they've come in feather duster, synthetic, whatever. You can see again, it's extendable. You can shorten it or, or lengthen it depending on the, the height of the person. But I wanna do anything to do with the ceiling vent. I wanna do anything you can see. I can stand back easily, okay? And I can do these whole entire surfaces these top edges, I can do in these areas, which are very seldom cleaned. Go down, I can go right to the floor. Okay. I can go along baseboards. I can go right to the top of the ceiling without stretching. I can do all kinds of vents, okay, where the dust is. And these ceiling vents, where there's typically a lot of nasty things, and if you remember, uh, COVID-19 is a droplet-based product, and this isn't the world of TV. We did, this has got a good cleaning protocol, this washroom. We didn't find a lot, but imagine keeping your feet on the ground, being able to dust everything. Lots of these bend for different shapes, pipes and HVAC systems and things. Your best friend when it comes to efficiencies with cleaning washrooms. So when it comes to doing floors, we've talked about double buckets versus single cavity buckets before. Uh, this is a typical double bucket. They come all kinds of brands, different manufacturers. But what I like about this is we're disinfecting floors. If we continue, if we're out mopping and we're mopping the floor like so, and we come back and we're dipping and rinsing out our mop, which is dirty by the way, in our fresh solution, and we wring it out and go clean again, we are spreading con possible contamination. We want to lower that risk and avoid it. So why we use a double bucket is because this is my fresh solution, okay? I'm going to dip, I'm going to come out, and I'm going to ring, just like I normally would with any particular ringer, okay? I'm going to go mop my floor, just like so. I'm gonna come back and I'm going to go right to the ringer. Just bear with me a second. I'm gonna go right to the ringer and wring out the majority of dirt and grit and things that you pick up on the floor. Then simply do a, a recharge in fresh solution, just a dip back in here to wring it out accordingly. And then I go back to the floor. What does that do for me? It stops me from contaminating my fresh disinfectant, disinfectant solution. I get a lot more mileage around the facility. I don't go have to go back to the custodial janitorial closet near as, near as many times, reducing labor dramatically. I've got a cleaner, 
safer result on the floor every single time. Not a question of whether you should consider a double cavity bucket. It's which brand best suits your facility. Single cavity buckets are really soil spreaders without doubt and you deserve better in your facility. So I would suggest that more efficiencies post coronavirus. Uh, we've talked before about our Serve Clean Drain CL. This is a sodium hypochlorite based powder. It just simply uh, is like laundry detergent where you would basically pour uh, half a cap for anything above the floor, a full cap for the floors. So what you can see, I've got a dirty drain here. It's very dry. So you're simply going to have strong odors that come out of there. Put the cap on, gonna add a little bit of water. And this is all you need to do to this floor drain. You'll see in a few seconds, that's going to activate the foam. You're gonna see it come up. It is going to sanitize that drain. It is going to clear out any fruit flies or any bugs, any organic matter that are there. This drain is so active, it'll go 10 to 15 feet down the drain. This will all subside in a few minutes, but what you can see here coming up, depending, you'll see all the black specks, more than likely bugs, definitely a cause of foul odors in your facility and very very simple way to use it okay so what you'll notice we've done the floor drain uh, that's actually continuing to sanitize we do the same thing that's a cap in the floor drains anything above the floor uh, meaning a sink a urinal uh, a drain uh, anything like that you just simply do a half a cap put it in like so right and uh, and what you'll see is when the flusher goes and the flusher never goes when you want it to go I'm gonna add a touch of water just to get it to activate faster and what you'll see here is you're starting that that foaming action is going down cleaning the traps eliminating any bugs any kind of sanitizing any organic matter that there may be there and getting rid of these that foul smell that comes from uh, urinals Another way to do it very quickly, housekeeping can come in and do this as part of their regular routine and, uh, and have um, basically about the best smelling uh, washrooms that you could possibly get. More importantly, free flowing drains, less calls to the plumber, less annoyance. So another use for drain CL from Serve Clean is your drains. Drains in the sinks and counters actually sometimes back up. In fact, they do quite uh, regularly uh, and they have foul odors. So what you see here, I'll just add simply a little bit of water, okay, to this solution and I'll let it do its work. So right now it's down in the drain, it's going 10 to 15 feet. It's dislodging organic matter here and you can see the activation foam coming up. If there's any fruit flies or anything, it'll drive them right out of there. But most importantly, you'll help keep your drains flowing freely, reduce odors and, uh, and get rid of any bothersome bugs and things like that as well. So now we're focusing on the toilet bowl. Real exciting part of the uh, facility to be in, but you know what? It's what we do. So you'll notice the water level of the bowl. Uh, that's typically where it is. But what happens is the ring and the lime buildup and, and uh, the staining, mildew and things, gathers around the water line. So when you add a general purpose cleaner or a bowl cleaner or a disinfectant, you've got a water barrier there so you don't get that good a result. What does that force the custodial janitorial person to do? Spend more time, more time, more labor, highest part of your spend. Let's show you a quick, efficient way to make it easier. Take my bowl brush, there's all kinds of them, and I just simply want to just thrust the water over like that three or four times and you can see now I've got, if there's any kind of lime buildup or whatever it is, I can then take my disinfectant, I can take my bowl cleaner, I can take whatever I'm going to use, and you'll see that'll actually drain down coming in contact with where the crust is and the staining and all of those things. And I wanna rotate through my bathroom. First thing I'm going to do is do my bowls and urinals. And you can see as I'm cleaning other parts of the washroom, this is doing the work for me. Better, safer, faster. So now we, we've gone from our bowls and we wanna to go to our urinals. And this is again, some of the problems uh, that you run into. S strong odors, urine smells, um, clogging, those things. Uh, this is our ES51, which is our eco-certified uh, washroom cleaner. Very good for porcelain fixtures, for bowls, 
for urinals, for sinks and things like that. I want to just simply do a flush first because you don't know what's been in there before. If you're in a school in a chemistry lab and they decide to put something down there and then you add this, it could be the opposite side of the, the opposite side of the pH scale. So let's not uh, take that risk and just simply apply up, okay? around the throat, around the neck that's up in there and let it sit. If I have one urinal, two urinals, I'm going to move to those now as I go through um, and let that product actually clean and disinfect if you choose a disinfectant and let it do the work for you. Much faster, much safer. Uh, obviously at the end you want when you come back, okay, you want to give it a real nice aggressive scrub, okay around the edges and you're done and then just give it a flush and you're done. Okay, and for one of the final steps we're going to talk about here is we're going to talk about mirrors and glass. Um, we've got an exceptional Enviro solution, 77 NFP. Uh, that stands for no flash point. There's no alcohol in here. Uh, it's an ECP certified, so Eco Luger certified. And typically the way you would do it is spray there and you use a paper towel, okay? is one way that people that do it, okay? Or they'll actually do a spray and they'll use a microfiber cloth or whatever, but this is a slow process. This is an original process and you can see it'll actually work very well. It'll flash off in probably about 20 seconds. Uh, if I have one mirror, that's not a bad thing, okay? It doesn't take me a long time, but I really wanna try and find you labor efficiencies of course you can do uh, the, the original way with paper towels and microfiber and things like that, but if you've got a lot of mirrors and a lot of windows in your facility, uh, let's look at a more efficient way. So I apply my glass cleaner on here. You can actually use a disinfectant if you have a lot of uh, issues of uh, cross-contamination, medical facilities and things, you can actually use a disinfectant and then do obviously a water rinse afterwards or you'll get some streaking. But look at this sheet of, of mirror. I can simply go nice, slow, not a lot of pressure, not reaching. If there's lipstick I, or something there that's grease or body lotion, uh, you know, whatever, I can give it some agitation. And then I just simply take my squeegee, okay? And this is an art. This is things that aren't easy to learn. You have to practice. But you usually start at the bottom. You'll go up across the surface, basically in a figure eight pattern. Okay, across, wipe your squeegee off, wipe any particular contact points or where you've got a little bit of product left back on and look at how easy that was. No reaching, no strain. You can use this, uh, these refills over and over and over again. Use your product of choice. You can use a glass cleaner. You can use a disinfectant as long as you rinse and look at the end result. Okay, so hopefully what you were able to see today is uh, we've got all kinds of labor efficiencies for cleaning washrooms, shower rooms, change rooms, whatever it may be. Uh, and then also what we're introducing today as well is our brand new Enviro Solutions post coronavirus washroom cleaning program checklist. This is basically a sign off weekly, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. If you want to add Saturday and Sunday, we can. And this is identifying the washrooms. So what you need is the preparation, the cleaning and disinfecting procedures, there's a quality assurance and cleanup program here for you to checklist to check it off. And then we've also included a few labor and cleaning efficiencies for you for training your people, giving you new new, new ideologies on how to actually clean in a post coronavirus uh, situation. Just one other way at Charlotte, one example of us giving you proven uh, programs that help lower the risk of an outbreak. Thank you. Okay, so um, hopefully uh, everybody got some good information out of that video. Uh, in the coming weeks, uh, we'll have lots of those efficiencies that we'll try to teach everybody. Uh, but, but I mean, it's just so simple. Uh, what I'd like to do is really, uh, I'm thinking we'll actually walk through the washroom and clean it in real time for you in all of these segments too, using the right chemistry with the right tools and things. So, so hopefully um, uh, you, that was worthwhile and you'll revisit it again. And, and believe me, that was Will help you a long way with uh, with working with uh, your current budget, whether it's uh, you know lower or the same or whatever, uh, and really uh, help lower the risk of an outbreak and address COVID nineteen and and build morale in your employees and uh, and the public health, uh, whether it's employees or visitors to your facility, uh, will certainly feel better about what you've done and you can prove to them uh, 
uh, that you're you're doing the right thing. Uh, we talked about dollars and cents last week, and uh, and I'll hold the uh, U.S. one up because it's actually Memorial Day. Uh, but this is what it's all about: the almighty dollar. Just remember, ninety percent of your budget spend or your spend uh, is on labor, right? Less than 10% is the cost of supplies. That means everything you buy that I just talked about and many, many hundreds and hundreds of other items make up less than this little tab. You know, price is important. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but really, you've got to look at what can I do for labor efficiencies, right? Um, you know, you you uh, the ready to use cost of liquids we're going to talk about next next week. We've had a couple of questions already online that we'll get to. Um, you re uh, price is important, but the ready to use cost is the most critical. That is, how much does that product make and how does it clean and what are the end result for your facility? We're going to help you with those things, right? Developing SOPs and motivational campaigns. Now is the time to motivate your cleaning and janitorial staff. There has not been a better time in the industry to do that. How do you motivate somebody to get out of bed and come to work and clean up somebody else's mess? How do you motivate a frontline worker of any sort to, to take the risk and, and uh, put their family at jeopardy? And what, uh, motivation is the key without doubt. You cannot put a price tag on it there. So, so that's really um, some important things there. Reminder on the proper disinfecting tool it's or protocol, it still is all kinds of questions that we get. Use a registered product, read the label, dilute it properly, always pre-clean, always respect the dwell time and always use potable water when it's necessary on food contact areas and things like that. That's the largest area of failure still today and it's the most difficult thing. So what we were talking about in the washroom video is uh, our post-coronavirus washroom, uh, coronavirus washroom cleaning check. A bit of a mouthful there. Uh, we put this together this week, uh, just on Wednesday, as a matter of fact, by listening to people like you, okay, asking us for help. And that's what this webinar series is about, is really how can we help? And what we really appreciate is we're gaining your trust on helping you uh, with, with better ways, more efficiencies and things. So this is something that's available to everybody. Right. And it's a it's an SOP type thing. It's a it's a little bit of a version here and it'll it'll do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It talks about the preparation and obviously the most important thing is where's your SDS sheet? Where's or that, that binder? Uh, understanding the precautions, understanding the first aid treatment before something happens. These are uh, announcing yourself uh, before you enter the opposite gender washer. These are key things that everybody needs to know and should be part of your SOPs or your training uh, programs, right? And then what we've done is cleaning and disinfecting procedures. We've gone through um, and we'll do this in a couple of weeks, go through the washroom and follow this actually but but the first thing okay regulatory compliance placing those wet floor signs and you see I've got plural there an S in brackets if there's one door you need one sign if there's two doors you need two signs you know and the horse otherwise you're liable you're taking a chance right you know so so attempting to clean the perimeter of the of the of the actual washroom or the area you're in people will go north south east and west and they just bounce around and they'll actually spend twice as much time so the flushing urinals before for you and uh, removing screens and removing debris. I'll go over it just quickly here, but there is a ton of solid information in here on this sheet for you. And it's two sheets because then we do a quality assurance uh, and cleanup. So in other words, we
Okay, so hopefully, hopefully, I think we're live. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to continue. Uh, uh, we had a little temporary uh, blackout there for some reason. Uh, I'm, I'm not sh sure why, but uh, anyway, I'll just finish up here. But the labor and the cleaning efficiencies, and I was talking about this little tool. This, this I mean, this, this basically takes your tools, gets them off the ground. Uh, it's mounted on the wall, and it doesn't matter what it is. I mean, we've talked about it before, but I mean, these are the kinds of things that make things better. So that that cleaning checklist is there. Uh, we talked about the surfaces in washrooms to uh, to make sure you lower the risk. We'll go into those next week. Um, and as and as far as uh, the webinar registration and the past uh, the past webinar recordings. Every single one of them have been on there. That's our 11th week actually now uh, that we're doing today. They're all on there. They're free of charge. Uh, the YouTube videos are also under Media Center. And if you go to videos, they're all there. Uh, registration's there. If you are registered, you'll get a few reminders here and there. If you're not registered, you won't. So reach out to us and our distributors uh, and make and make sure that that you're there. Uh, lots of resources, uh, you know, for you to look up, uh, uh, whether it's in your local uh, state or province or, or country, it doesn't matter. They're there. We, we always recommend you use those reliable sources. And really, before we get to the questions, because we're about to get there, um, we hope that you've uh, enjoyed it. Uh, sorry for the little glitch there. Uh, next week is May the 29th. 9th, which is so close to June, it's actually quite uh, startling. Uh, they, they will include the most recent COVID-19 uh, updates. Uh, we're going to talk about ready-to-use pricing. We're going to talk about some uh, product dilution, some building re-entry. Uh, and actually, next week is new. Uh, you're seeing all of these plexiglass screens and sneeze guards and all of those things. Uh, and the big question we're getting this week is, how do we clean those? Can we disinfect them? Should we sanitize them? What should we do? Right. So that's actually, again, an example of listening to you and uh, and really trying to answer your questions and sincerely be there for you. So with that, uh, now joining me is uh, is Ask with Williams and uh, over comes our questions. Ask with, did you get your sheet? Uh, oh, no, yeah, I okay. No you didn't get there. No, okay. So, okay. so this is uh, you're okay. You're just going to you're just going to run with the program. Uh, Try my best yeah. to run with the program. Yeah. I'll tell you, I think ask with you're in big trouble because I'm just glancing at these and I see them 10 seconds before you. But, uh, uh, you know, this is all about reopening facilities and mm -hmm. things again there. So so this is from Jennifer. Uh, I work in a restaurant industry as a line cook. I often often witness my food uh, service staff employees being asked to clean the washrooms just before they start their table service. Is this standard protocol and should the management not be revisiting this and assign this is a big long question and assigning one individual to clean and sanitize our restaurant? Is it a risk fit to finish cleaning washroom fixtures and then go handle food and be in the proximity of customers and food service items? Of course, of course. <laughs> and it's a, it's a very long question. Yeah, but a valid question. A lot of restaurants are small business operation. And, um, you know, ideally, you know, you should have the proper PPEs. Uh, to do the cleaning that they just did and um, make sure that they change those PPEs thereafter, wash properly, and then redress in terms of serving the customer. Yeah, yeah. So that's basically what should be done. Yeah. So if they do that, there's no yeah, risk no, to the, no the risk clientele to, in the restaurant. Absolutely right? not. Okay. So that's good. So good yes. question though, Jennifer. Very, very it, good it, question. I, I will add to this. If the employee's going in and not washing their hands and uh, cleaning and, and out before, like, I mean, that's well, a no-no. Well, that's oh, absolutely Yeah. No -no. Okay. Good. Good. Uh, here's one from Jamie. I enjoyed last week's topics tremendously. The ATP meter validation was beneficial. Can one expect to see typical numbers this high on general surfaces? And I I remember we were 966 yes right <laughs> and i think you'll be high as that and higher yeah until you clean properly yeah. and then you see the numbers reducing yeah and the goal of atp is to get your benchmark where you've yes. started and strive for lower right that's Absolutely. all it is right and strive within the range that you dis you discussed yes um last week yeah and if you're you start here and you end up going here <laughs> that's then you're not doing something you're doing you, something wrong. you definitely want to read that okay Absolutely. that's there's jamie there mm -hmm. uh david m i need assistance with the proper dilution of my disinfectants if I have a gallon of product that's diluted at one to 64, how much product will it make and how do I calculate my ready?
okay, I not sure quite what happened there. Maybe it's the summer weather or the Memorial weekend or something that's causing that answer. Or maybe it's you actually, but <laughs> might but, be me. <laughs> yeah. So, so basically one to 64, you yes. take one jug, one of, jug, uh, 64 jugs of water. Yes. That'll give you your 65 jugs. Yeah. Period. One cup, 65 cups. Yeah. Okay. And right. then you just take your price X, whatever you're paying, divide, divide that 65, 65 into it. And you got your dollar back. Good stuff. Okay. So hopefully that helps David. Another yeah. quick one. And mm -hmm. we're going to wrap up in a, in a few minutes because we know we're a little over time here and we've had some calculator some issues there but uh out of respect of uh of the time there this video will be um uh, as always it'll be on here and hopefully we can have the uh technical issues uh, addressed there but uh um you know these uh you know would, there's a david l uh would you be so kind as to discuss the ways to keep my disinfectant on the surface for five to ten minutes as i see our entire janitorial team struggling with this how do you keep it wetter longer well well, you know, uh, it all depends on your dispensing. And thank you, thank you for yeah. passing this on. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need to use um, a dispensing agent that absolutely amplifies the amount of product on the surface to keep the surface sufficiently um, wet for the recommended amount of time. Yeah, yeah. You know, because you know it's more efficacious if you have the dwell time. Yeah. Dwell time is absolutely important. Yeah, let the product okay. do the work. Let the for product you. do the work. Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So ways, uh, I mean, the charge buckets, the microfiber yes. tube yes. updates, Ab uh, absolutely, the scrub sleeve that yep. we showed, all on the video are mm -hmm. are, are ways of doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's Carolyn um, or Caroline. Sorry, yeah, you mentioned that out of every dollar spent on custodial budgets, over ninety percent relates to labor and ten percent goes to products. Where can I verify this information to assist with helping me secure a, a higher budget? Well, of course, um, a lot of this data that we, we collect is from the ISSA. Yes. So, you know, um, that's something that I think uh, you can go on there, uh, on the ISSA website, you can get that information quite readily. Yeah, and the ISSA stands for International Sanitary Supply Association. In fact, you'll find the numbers this year are probably closer to 94% labor and less mm -hmm. about 6% supplies. So it varies year to year based on the economy and things like that. And I think yes. we'll just do two more and then we'll... Uh, uh, then we'll uh, wrap it up here for okay. for time there. Uh, here's Veronica. I think your that your new post coronavirus checklist is a tremendous tool uh, for our washrooms. Can I get a copy sent to me and uh, so I can begin using? Of course, yes, yeah, yes. Absolutely. I mean, you know, we'll 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 send that out to you. Yeah. Yeah. On, and it's also on our website as well. Yeah, it's on the website. Yes. We'll send it out. It's free of charge. Uh, I'm getting a lot of emails uh, mm -hmm. personally now. Uh, they're connecting me with this webinar and our, our team on the order desk and uh, pricing desk are getting hundreds of emails. So look at just just send them in and we will get to you without without uh, question. Uh, here's Candace. Do you offer a service to clean our garbage dumpsters to reduce that offensive smell? Uh, well, of course. One can go with uh, bioenzymatic type products yep. that we do have, and um, you know you get rid of that those uh, odors quite readily. Yeah, we have uh, um, pail misters, dumpster misters, yes. those types of things. Uh, we don't actually do the service, so we don't come and clean actually. Uh, but we provide all of our distribution network with mm -hmm. everything that you need to set it up, and it, it's on an automatic timer. It goes day or night. It goes, uh, um, you know, on holidays when you're not in the in the uh, area, you're not in the facility, and all of those things. So, so I think out of respect of time and our few little uh, IT issues, we'll we'll wrap it up. Uh, We'll answer some of these questions um, during the week is what we'll do. But but really, in summary, um, you know, listen, thank you for your participation. It means the world to us. Um, it just it makes us feel good at the end of the day, knowing that we can truly help you lower that risk of an out outbreak, uh, find labor efficiencies. Uh, new ways, original ways of cleaning, uh, because we look at our, our industry has to change. There's not an industry that doesn't have to change. The airline industry has to change. The education sector has to change. Food service has to change. It, 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 trucking has to It doesn't matter what the field. Janitorial, custodial, uh, must change as well. And those that change uh, will come out on the strong end of it. Those that are set in their ways uh, probably won't. Um, 
So really that's, uh, that's part of the respect level we have for you and we learn from you as well. So keep those questions coming in. And I'd like to say to, the, to our, our uh, American friends, obviously the best Memorial Day um, that you could possibly have. I think the weather is gonna cooperate, but practice that social distancing and ask with, I will turn to you. Practice social distances, <laughs> yes, absolutely. And of course, if you can't do that, wear your mask. Yes. And of course, continue to wash your hands absolutely. regularly. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week, Friday 29th, or the 29th, sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay.